Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today's video is a little bit special. It is a video hop um, for honeybee stamps and we are doing basically it's $25, two $25 gift cards to the lucky winner. So make sure that you hop along. It will be linked below in the description on YouTube. Um, and then just, you have to each video, check them out, leave some love, leave a comment for the creator, and then move on to the next stop. Um, and then the winners will be announced on October 26th um, on the Honeybee site. So today we're doing something, <laughs> in addition to it being a little different that it's a video hop, um, I am using a couple of new products. This is to celebrate the vintage Christmas release for Honeybee Stamps. And I am using the Merry Mail um, Snow Family Like Ours. And then the other set that I showed, which I didn't end up using in this particular video, but you'll see why later on, um, is the Sleigh Bells Ring. I'm going to be using the No Line ink from Honeybee Stamps to stamp these down on my watercolor paper. I am using the Montaval, um, oh, why can't I ever remember this, guys? Do you know the answer? The Canson Montaval watercolor paper. Um, I have really good luck with this in my zigs, uh, which is what we're going to be using today. Um, this is just kind of like my go-to watercolor paper. I haven't found a medium that I didn't like on it. I did end up having to stamp this twice just because watercolor paper is textured. It is difficult to get a good imprint on. So I'm going to stamp it two times and then we're going to get into the coloring. Now, why is this video different? <laughs> um, this video is different because we're not actually going to be making a card. We're just going to be coloring the images. And then you're kind of going to decide where we go from there. The reason that I tried to do it this way is because I had somebody specifically um, ask me if I would use my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. It's been a while since I made a video with them and I thought that it would be better, I guess, to have a video that just concentrated on the coloring so we could have a little bit more instruction along with story time. Um, instead of the full-blown making of the card, you could see the coloring a little bit more in depth. I have had my Zig Clean color markers for a couple of years now. Um, I super love them as a medium. I just, <laughs> my go-to is Copics, so I don't often think to use them. Um, and so I'm glad that they, they asked and I'm happy to share them and share my thoughts about them. Um, and so, yeah, so obviously we're into the coloring. We'll talk about that first and then we'll get into what our options are. So with the Zig Clean color markers, I like to do two things with them. First things first, I like to lay them down direct to my dry paper um, in just a line of color. And then that way I can start in my lightest area with my water and bring my water to my pigment. So that's how I can get super light shading on these snowmen. I picked a blue gray for my snowmen. You could certainly do gray, you could do blue, you could even do some purple, um, and it would still totally make sense as a shadow for white. Um, I just really like this color. I think it's really pretty, and I think it is definitely suitable for a snowman. Um, so I lay the line down, and then I pick up water. I'm using a number two round brush. I blot off the base of the bristles. So sometimes you can see it on screen and sometimes you can't. Um, and then just because we're zoomed in so much so you can see the coloring. But I typically dip my paintbrush in, I blot the base of the bristles, and then I take the water that's left on just the tip of the paintbrush and um, I will bring that clean water to the areas that 
I want to be the lightest and then drag that to the color versus dragging the color to the lighter areas, you're going to get much darker shading that way. The other way I use them is what you just saw here with the carrot nose. So I have an acrylic black or a um, the a media mat where I will scribble a little bit of color on and then I pick that up with my paintbrush and it will allow me to add in some darker shading, uh, which is super helpful, um, especially since some of these Zig color markers, because they're so bright, which is, I'll be honest, what drew me to them. I love bright colors, um, but sometimes you need to add a little bit more shading and that is definitely a way to do it. You can take the marker to wet paper but I have never liked my results with that. And so that might just be a me thing, um, but because I don't like the results, I don't use them that way. Some things to note, never work in two wet areas at the same time. The method that I use in coloring with my Zig Clean colors minimizes the amount of water that I use, which means that my paper dries exponentially faster like it dries almost immediately. So I don't really have to worry about two colors bleeding together. Um, sometimes that happens anyway, and you'll see it here uh, when we're working on things, and I'll try to point that out and how I worked around that when it happened. Um, but so you don't want to work in two wet areas. You also want to be conscientious of making sure that you don't have too much water that is the number one issue that I hear people complain about when they are learning how to watercolor with any watercolor medium, not just zigs. It's almost always that there's too much water, that their, their brush is too wet. So you wanna minimize the amount of water that you have for the most amount of control. Here, you probably think I've lost my mind. I haven't, I'm perfectly sane. Mostly. I'm pregnant, so I'm a little bit crazy. Um, so the reds. <laughs> the reds with Zig Clean Color Markers always wash out to like pinks for me. Even this red, which I have the 36 set. I showed that to you. But I have supplemented some other colors in there because... I didn't have exactly the shades that I needed. Fortunately, Zigs are sold as individual markers. So I bought the 36 set as a base and then I have just picked up the ones that I felt like my collection needed um, after that. So with the reds, they do wash out to pink. It's a little bit frustrating for me. Even this one, which is like a wine red, still is a little bit too pink. So in order to get more depth of color and a little bit more shading with any color, you can use its complementary color to add some depth. Now, I could have gone with a very dark green and got a very dark red, but I didn't. I went with a light green because I'm not looking for it to be crazy dark, but I do just want there to be a little bit of dimension. And that's why you see me add the green and then go back over it with the red. It gives those shadows that I'm looking for. Then the other areas I'm going to go ahead and color in green. This is a risk because they're complementary colors and if they mix they will make brown. Um, but I felt confident that I would be able to keep them contained and I was able to do that. And I really like the way his little hat and scarf came out. I think they're super cute. Um, but that, that complementary color trick will work. You just have to be aware like you don't want to use a, what would be a good example here? Um, so if you are have a blue that you want to shade darker, um, you don't want to pick an orange that's super yellow because then your shading is going to look green. It's not going to look like a darker shade of blue because it has yellow in it and yellow and blue make green. Or if you're shading something um, with purple and you're going to use a yellow to add some shading or vice versa you want to make sure that like your purple didn't have a lot of 
blue in it. It will make green or a lot of um, pink in it. Um, and there are different tones for different things, you know, so maybe you want a purple that has a lot of pink in it because then when you add the yellow, it's gonna, um, make it a little bit more orangey. So you just play with your colors. And if you have just like a scrap piece of watercolor paper, don't be afraid to like mix and match them and see what kind of colors you can make with the colors that you have. Like I said, I bought the 36 set and I never felt the need to buy, a bigger set or I never had any regret about not buying a bigger set. Um, I just supplemented the ones that I needed. So this whole release, this whole vintage Christmas release, obviously lends itself very well to watercoloring. Um, it's just like that same kind of style. And even though these particular stamps are more on the cute side, which I really like. <laughs> um, you can color them in a way that makes them look a little bit more vintage just with your color choices and the mediums that you choose. Like watercolor is going to be a lot softer than, you know, a bright Copic marker, which would kind of enhance the cuteness. Here I am using the tree that is included. This is just an outline tree. Um, and then I added in the middle portion so that I could give it just a little bit more body and a little bit more definition. Um, and you could do this with any medium. I would be really interested. So here's the first question that I'd like you to answer. I would be very interested to know what is your go-to watercolor medium? I have a couple of different ones. I have Daniel Smith's, which are traditional watercolors. I have some watercolors that are by other, um, craft companies. Like I have Alta News watercolors. I have, um, do I have another set from, oh, I have Artezas, um, which are very similar to Zig clean color markers. I have, uh, Derwent ink tents, which are colored pencils that are watercolors. Um, which is almost what I used for this until, like I said, I had a specific request for the Zig clean color markers. Um, so that's the first question I would like you to answer for me because I'm very interested to know what is kind of like your go-to watercolor medium. The next question is going to decide how we proceed with these images from here. So my original game plan was to do this video and to concentrate very much on the coloring portion. And I know that it takes me a long time to do coloring. It takes me an extra long time to do watercoloring. And since I didn't want to have to speed up the process, I chose to just do the images today so you could see what that looked like. Um, and then my game plan was to do a secondary video where we actually created the car, you know, painted the background, um, and then put the elements together to create a card, which is still totally on the table, 110%. However, if you have a different idea of something you would like to do, Maybe you would like to see a comparison of Zig Clean Color Markers and the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. I can make that happen. Maybe you would like to see a comparison of traditional watercolors and something like a Zig Clean Color Marker. Um, if you're into something like that, please let me know. Um, we can still make the cards with them. But then I would just kind of show you like one in one, like maybe one snowman in the traditional watercolor and one snowman with the watercolor colored pencils. And then, um, you know, we would make the card from there. Something like that. Um, I would just be very, I would like to know what it is that you're, like when you're coming here, I know you come for story time. We know that. I know that. You know that. We all know that. But in addition to that, I would like you to walk away with some, <laughs> with some sort of education about something that we've done here. Um, so please let me know what you would be interested in learning. Maybe watercolors aren't your thing at all, which is totally fine because it's obviously not my go-to medium. Um, Copics are. They just are. They're, I like the bright colors. I like the blends that I can get. Uh, I like the scene building. All of those things. Um, not that you can't do any of those with painting. You can. It just takes a lot longer. And probably because I don't do it all the time. Um, so yes, please let me know what you would like the next video to be. And then 
I'll do that because I'm open, you know. <laughs> um, so here, after I have added some layers and some shading to the tree, I'm just going to color in the little stump uh, brown, and then I added some shading with a darker brown. I mentioned this because that darker brown is going to <laughs> is going to come into play later on. So, um, yeah, as far as story time goes, I. I've pretty much, I think I told you recently, I've just been surviving my life on a series of naps um, and doing just what I need to do. <laughs> just what I need to do in my life to get by. So still working, still taking care of Peanut, um, still doing some things around the house like cooking dinner and the dishes, not doing much more than that. Um, and I have looked into, for the first time ever, possibly hiring a cleaning person not a full-time cleaning person because I'm not that bougie but not that I'm judging people who do I'm totally not judging you I say you do whatever works for your family um but with the baby coming just any time now oh please lord um I would like just like the base level of my house to be just clean like so one come in one fail swoop of deep cleaning um which my mother is gonna listen to this and she is probably thinking to herself I told her I would do that and she did but I'm not gonna let her and do you know why because my mother has no business doing it um <laughs> and neither does Eric's mom who also has offered um Eric has been doing all of the other things and he would 110% do it, but I have no idea when he would have time. So there was a girl on Facebook Marketplace who was basically putting out, you know, um, just some information about her business and that she was looking to pick up some new customers. Um, and she was offering discount. And I'm all about a discount because, you know, I'm a cheap chicken. Cheap, cheap. Um, and so she came and looked. And I'm looking for, like, the first floor... And then my bathrooms. Like, I don't, not anybody's bedroom or anything like that. But first floor, and then my bathrooms. And I feel like I'm good with that. Because, um, like, I'm not going to be down on my knees scrubbing baseboards. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what I'm looking for. I would like heading into having a couple of months off and being exhausted and um, very busy taking care of our new child. I would like to not have to worry about that particular portion of it so she came out she was very nice she was very reasonable um but she doesn't have an opening until next week and honestly i'm hoping that that is too late because <laughs> i really would like this child to be born before then um so we'll just have to see whether or not that works out for us um some something else to note about the coloring so here you can see I'm doing this black top hat and um, I have been coloring in their eyes and their mouth with the uh, black uh, zig marker you could certainly use a colored pencil for this or a pen um, but I wanted to keep it soft kind of like the rest of the images but please make sure that you do this after all of your other water coloring in that area is done. Like you don't want to take the chance that you're going to bleed out their eyeball um, into the rest of your business. Also, do as I say and not as I do. Because here, I had no idea what color I was going to do the band on his hat. And I ended up doing it kind of like a shaded white. Um, and I should have done that before I did the holly. Um, and very much like his scarf, I decided to do it red. And then I was like, oh, well, red and white would be cute, but I've already done the red. So the white was impossible. Um, I just could not keep it from bleeding into it. So always do your lighter colors first, especially if you're doing a white, um, because you're really just putting in the shadows. You're not putting in the color to color the object. You're putting in the shadows to shade the object. Um, and so I ended up just doing it like a two-tone red, which worked out just fine. 
it was no no big deal um but yeah definitely do as I say and not as I do <laughs> do all your light colors first otherwise you will not have the option to do them anything else <laughs> um so yeah so I'm looking at the cleaning lady which I feel like is a good one-time investment for me right now at where I'm at in my life um what else the nursery is done my wonderful husband has installed the car seats because you know they won't let you leave the hospital until your child is in a car seat uh, you literally have to bring it upstairs so that they can see <laughs> that you have a car seat to put them in um which really I have to tell you is kind of baffling to me because I know um like at the working in law enforcement that there are a lot of people who have babies that are not in car seats uh which is terrifying um, even though I'm a child of the eighties and I was never, <laughs> I was never in a car seat. I was just free, you know, free sleeping really, honestly, in the back seat. Um, but I don't understand, are they borrowing people's car seats and then giving them back? Is there like one car seat for the whole family? I'm not sure what happens there. Very curious. Um, but so you have to, he's, he's, he's put in the car seats. So no matter whose car we end up in. Uh, when the time comes, then we'll be able to have that when we leave. The bag is packed. Um, and so we're ready on that front. And he is currently working on building shelves for the baby's room. Um, I have, I bought a cute little cloud shelf. I think I told you our nursery theme is uh, You Are My Sunshine. So this adorable little cloud shelf that I love. And then I got two just kind of like plain um, floating shelves. But I would like some more shelf space really just for like decor items. And um, then I could possibly use that cloud shelf for books, which I would like. Because right now the books are on top of the dresser. And um, I feel like it would like free up that dresser space for something else. But anyway, um, I have not shared any pictures of the nurse. I should probably do that. Maybe I'll do that and share them on Instagram. Um, cause I haven't taken any photos there. Uh, yeah. So still working every night that I work. Um, my doctor said it was due to stress and probably dehydration. Uh, like my belly is just super tight. So I was joking with the girls at work, like I'm not even going to know when I go into labor because <laughs> like I'm just in a permanent state of contraction um, whenever I'm at work and it's very uncomfortable and I sure it cannot be comfortable for this child either. Um, here I made the same mistake. I put the green down first and then I was like, oh, I'm going to do white ribbon. Um, I was able to fix it this time around just because I blotted it up, which is another trick with watercolors. Um, you can fix your boo-boos if you catch them while they're still wet, or if you re-wet them, you can blot up the pigment. Now, it depends on what color it is. Obviously, a gray is going to be easier to pick up than a red, um, but you can get that pigment up and then if you're going over it with another color it'll be less of an issue here you can see on that right hand side the white ribbon pretty much got eaten up by the green um because i did the green first should have done the white first i tell you these things that i know but even i don't do them as you can see here nobody's perfect i'm not jesus um so I'm just going to, for this ribbon here in the center, I'm just going to keep slowly adding, um, what is the, why can I not, I, pigment is what I wanted to say, but I don't think that's right. Um, I'm just going to keep adding more intense color so that I can finally get that ribbon shape. Um, and here is where I'm picking up the green so that I can make it somewhat kind of white. <laughs> a little bit. A smidge. Um, but these presents are from the Merry Mail, which you're definitely going to see me do a card with because I think it's so cute. It's a, like a little vintage mailbox. It has like little birds. It has um, 
like Christmas lights that wrap around the post. It has packages. Um, it's, it's just darling. And I think it's so cute. And it would be so cute for a scene card. And you know that I'm here for that. Um, here in this package, <laughs> this is a clear case of me rushing and not looking at my, um, which marker I have picked up. So I started off with the light brown. I believe this is called oatmeal. Um, with the intention of doing like a craft package with like a fat red ribbon in the center. Um, so that was my intention. That's how I started off brown. I wanted to use that dark brown that I used for the tree stump earlier. But what I picked up was black. Because I wasn't paying attention and I was rushing. And I was <laughs> I was just like trying to get it done. And then when I started here, I could see that it was very clearly black. And there was no... Like, I was committed to it, y'all. You see how many black lines I put down there? Um, and then I was like, well, it is what it is. It's going to be a black and red package instead of a brown and red package. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, accept that that's the decision that I have made here. So, I don't think it's that terrible. I do think that you see uh, on occasion some black and red um, Christmas paper. So, if we like when we decide what we're going to do with the cards what I will probably do with these packages because you know that this is how I roll I like to add a lot of white gel pen details um and so I will probably take the opportunity to kind of fancy them up that way um since they do look very plain to me right now not that there's anything wrong with them but I like I like the detail work you guys know this if you watch my channel um, biggest thing with the packages when you're coloring the packages is you just want to make sure you have super defined edges um, because that is what's going to give you the dimension so that your box doesn't look flat. So there should be one side or another that has a darker pigment um, so that way it gives it you know that 3D look as well as a very defined edge for where your box corners meet each other. I'm going to do the same thing with the little um, green trick on the red box to make the sides a little bit deeper as well as the back of the box. And then because this does have so much yellow in it, um, you can see that, you know, it, do, it does look a little bit green. But once you go back over it with the red, it's less noticeable and is definitely more depth than... Uh, you know, that, yeah, I don't even know, that yellowish green color that you can see, it definitely appears to be a darker red. If you have any trouble with the no-line coloring, you can certainly do these outline, absolutely, 110%. But if you're trying to do the no-line coloring and you're having a hard time seeing what the image is, just keep your stamp set, like, on the side of your desk so that you can see them. Um, and then usually you can figure out where the lines are based on uh, looking on that stamp set. So, just a quick reminder, since it is a video hop, make sure that you head down to the YouTube description below and click on the next person, which is, um, I believe, my friend Shannon, who is endlessly talented and you won't be disappointed. Um, and if you're just joining because you happen to follow my channel, uh, make sure you go back to the beginning. We have those two gift cards that we're giving away. Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Please let me know what kind of card you would like to make with these images, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.